For those of you who saw our first video on wiper motor wiring, we concentrated strictly on the functionality of the park feature. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a second park location using a simple single pole double throw contact switch so that the motor can stop in two locations. If you recall, we need a single pole double throw relay of some kind to enable the park feature, and we use that as a trigger. When the relay is closed, power is directed straight into the motor and it starts to turn. At some point during the rotation, we can drop the relay out, and because the park feature is no longer in play, power can still be delivered into the motor and it continues its rotation through to completion. When it gets to the end, the park feature kicks in, shorting the inside of the motor to ground, and the motor comes to a halt. To add a second park location, now we add the second switch, like this. In order for this to work, the switch must be positioned in such a way that the motor can hit it during its rotation, but still be allowed to pass by after the motor starts again. In this case, let's place the switch about halfway through a rotation. Now, when we activate the relay, power is applied to the motor and it starts to rotate as before. Only this time we'll keep the relay closed and allow the motor to rotate until it hits the switch. At this point, the switch acts the same way as the internal park switch does. It shorts the motor to ground, so the motor stops. As long as we keep the relay activated, the motor stays put. However, when the relay releases, power travels through the park switch on the inside of the motor now, and the motor is allowed to continue rotating as usual. The motor will spin until the internal park switch activates, stopping the motor as it normally would. This gives us our two park locations. The original is based on the internal park switch, which we can't change. However, the second park location is based on the position of the switch, so we can put that anywhere within the rotation cycle of the motor. So that's how it works from a theoretical perspective. But let's see how we would put it to a practical use. So here we are up in the rafters and we're looking at the modified version of our dropper prop. Now here we've actually added the second switch, which is right here. And you can see from the size, very heavy duty. This is the extra switch that we put in. It's what we call a single pole double throw. I'll explain that a little bit. But that's the added piece that we put in to give us our second braking position. Okay, so what we're going to do is activate this and I'll show you what happens when we get around to hitting this switch. As soon as we hit the switch, the motor comes to a screeching halt, but I've still got the trigger relay activated. When I now release the trigger relay, it completes its rotation and now parks in its normal park position. So we've in fact created a second park location for it. So now you can see how we've created that second stop location so our dropper is allowed to actually pause at the bottom part way through the cycle and then we can let him spring back up under our control. But I was mentioning that single pole double throw switch so let's just see what that's all about. So what the heck is a single pole double throw switch? Well in this circuit there's actually two of them. This one here is the actual trigger relay and this one here is the second switch that we've added. So let's take a closer look at one of them. First a definition. This is a single pole double throw switch because we have a single pole or one common connector for part of our circuit. On the other side we actually have two possible contact connectors. So that gives us the double throw. It can be in one position or the other. Switches like this are usually labeled by the initials single pole double throw or SPDT. In order to correctly identify which connector is which, the one across the central or common area is usually referred to as common. The one in the resting position is called normally closed and the one that is left open normally is normally open. They're often referred to with their initials NC and NO. So in this circuit, the contacts would be labeled as this. So hopefully that'll help you out with some scares that you need to have, kind of to do a half cycle, stop, and then cycle again. 
Have any questions, as always, send us an email and stay safe. Have fun.